book, uh, Bumble Boogie. It's actually uh, written by Rimsky Korsakoff, but uh, adapted by Jack Fina, Boogie Woogie pianist. Anyway, I'm here today to talk about this Yamaha C3 for Randy. So this Yamaha C3 is a very late model that uh, Randy's got coming his way. And I know that he's really, really excited because he's waiting, been waiting a very, very long time. It's just that we've been so backed up here. A lot of people getting pianos. I guess they're home. They're not feeling well with COVID and they want to brighten up the day so they're buying themselves a piano. But anyway, so we've been really, really busy here and uh, we finally got this piano going out to Randy. But anyway, this is, uh, again, this is the Yamaha C3. This is what we call Yamaha C3 fully loaded. What fully loaded means, it has the piano disc, iPad system. It also has the silent system where you can play the piano silently. So just a, a little tour of the piano. Um, and just like we do with all our videos, I like to just review when you get your piano, all the things that you need to do to get it up and running. So one of the things that we're gonna do is that when the mover comes to your house and he sets up your piano, it's gonna be set up like this. It's gonna be all ready for you to interact with it and use it and all that, or play it yourself or play it with the machine. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to turn it on and show you what's underneath the piano so you are more familiar with it when it gets to your house. So anyway, I'm gonna go over on this side, the camera can go on that side. Okay, hello there. So the most important thing that you're gonna see over here is your on-off switch. This is a power strip. So you can actually leave this on all the time, but if you don't use the piano for some time, then it'd probably be a better idea just to leave it uh, off, okay? Uh, this is your speaker. This is a Yamaha studio monitor. And this is what your background music is going to come out of, okay? This is your power supply. This supplies the power to the piano. So the electrical components. This is your piano disc, Prodigy CPU. Very, very important, okay? Um, over here are all your solenoids. They're up inside the piano. Uh, old type of solenoids used to hang down about this low, but this is called the low profile system. This is state of the art where all the solenoids are up inside the piano. Um, this little gadget over here, this is a pedal solenoid. So when the pedal is played, it pushes down and this activates the pedal. Here you go here. Over here is the sensor for the pedal when you're uh, using your silent system so you can hear the piano through the headphones. And this obviously is your pedals. This is your user box for the silent system. Okay, so let's get back out over here. And a couple of things to show you how to, just simple things that uh, would be good to know when you get your piano. I know a lot of people don't watch all my videos, so I try to do this on all the videos when we show the pianos that are going out. Uh, oh, this piano's kind of dusty. I'm going to have to get a very, very special piano spray. Everybody asks me what we use on our pianos, and actually, we have it right here. It comes in this bottle, and we're gonna send one of these bottles out with every piano, and I just call it piano spray, but it says piano outlet on it, and uh, actually, this is not something you can buy in any store. We have this specially made for us. And how we actually got, uh, got a hold of this particular uh, chemical or whatever it is, is I use it on my cars. See the cars here? 1961 Chrysler, 1967 GTO. And uh, I used to buy this from this, this guy that used to make it and uh, special and used to use it on my cars because it works on everything. It works on chrome, works on the paint and it's really great for the piano. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just spray this over here, wipe the dust off, and you see there's no streaks, and you could use this on your car, you could use it on your mirrors in your house, you could use it wherever you like a shiny thing. You just can't drink it. Everything else you could use it for, but I wouldn't 
say that you could drink it, a good idea to drink it. Okay, that's that. Okay, so this comes with the piano. Also, one other thing. Okay. We give out t-shirts now. See you like my t-shirt? Anyway, we have these done in-house here, and with every piano you get a t-shirt. So make sure you remind me to uh, put your, your t-shirt with your piano, and what size. We got extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large, okay? All right, back to the piano. So, now, let's say the piano is closed, okay? We're gonna do the process of opening it up. Okay, so, when the piano is closed, it obviously looks like this. If you want to open the piano, do not stand in front of the piano like this and open it because it's going to be way too heavy for you to lift up the lid. You always stand on this section of the piano and then when you lift up the lid, do not lift the lid up like this. Very bad. I see a lot of photographs and online of pianos being displayed like this and that's very wrong because it puts a lot of tension on the, the brass hinge here. You have to fold it back like this. Incidentally, this is called the top board. And this is called the lock bar because it has a lock in it. Okay? So you fold it back, and then you're going to lift it up. And this is called the prop stick. Okay? This props the lid up. And you'll notice there's two cups here. Okay? The prop stick is always 90 degree angle to the lid. So the, the larger prop stick, which is because there's three sizes here. There's one here, and then there's two, and then there's three. So the large one goes here. It does not go here. Because the prop stick always has to be at a 90 degree angle to the lid. Very, very important. And then if you don't want it as high, then you can lift up this short guy over here. And then the short one, he goes here. Okay? You can have it just that way. That's nice. Okay. I'm gonna put this back this way. And now we're gonna to off to describe what we have here, which is the, a lot of people call the music stand. Actually, this part is called the music stand, but the whole assembly is called the music desk. How we take the music desk out, if we wanna take it out, is let's say you drop a pencil in here or something, you wanna take this out, you wanna blow it out or clean it. It's very important that this part here is down. This is called the fallboard, and it needs to be in the down position. Okay? So when it's down, because if it's up and you try to pull this out, it's going to scratch the top of it over here. Then you're going to call me and go, oh, Russell, what am I going to do if I scratch my piano? And I said, well, you have to send it back to me so we can fix it. And you're not going to want to do that. So you always make sure this is down, and then you're going to pull this out, one hand on each side, and then you can take it out. And it's always kind of, you always got to push it in. There you go the same amount of pressure on each side. There we go, okay. And then this, the music stand itself, you have these different levels, and so you could put it this, 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 this. I usually like it down, because you can hear the piano better when it's down. When it's in front of you, it kind of blocks the sound. And then your foreboard here, obviously you're going to leave it opening and close it. It's pretty, pretty simple there. So, next thing we're going to do is going to show you how to use the iPad with the piano. So, let's assume that you have the piano turned on, as this piano is turned on right now, and then we're going to open it up. Now, usually when you get your piano, you may have already sent me your iPad, so I programmed it for you, so that when you turn the iPad on, it already links up with the Bluetooth on the piano. So, if it's linked up to the Bluetooth, you'll see over here on the iPad, you're gonna look on Bluetooth, okay? Gonna hit Bluetooth, and this is what you wanna look for. PD Silent Drive Bluetooth Audio, and you'll see that it's connected. Once it's connected, it's all you have to worry about, okay? Let's go out of it, and you'll see here, this app here is the IQ app, okay? And then when you go into it, depending on what screen it is, you always wanna press this icon down here, which is like a little iPad, and that give you all your, all your music. So. I like to go up and pick something to demonstrate, let's say, the piano, uh, piano only. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so let's pick a little uh, arabesque from Debussy. Okay, you see it right here, so I'm going to press it. And it's going to start. Okay, so now I'm going to press pause and just explain to you a little bit about setting the volume. 
This little speaker icon is for your volume. So you're going to press it here. You're going to see right over here, you're going to see this is this, the volume control, okay? This way is low, it's a slider. So I'm going to leave it in the middle here, okay? So that's your level. The next one is the balance between the speaker underneath and the keyboard, okay? Because on some of the music, you have background music accompanying the piano. So what you want to do is, is that if that's the case, then you want more piano because the background music is accompanying it. But a lot of it is also vocals. So if we turn on Celine Dion, you're going to want to hear Celine Dion's voice in the piano in the background. So you're going to move this a little bit this way. And I'll demonstrate that when we play it. But for now, let's just turn Debussy back on. Now I'm going to lower the volume. Now notice, when I, when I move the volume control back and forth, I don't just move it. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it a little bit and then wait and listen for the reaction. That's a nice sweet volume, but we always want to see if maybe we can get it as low as possible, and then you'll notice at some point some of the notes won't play. So see right there is a little too low because the, the notes aren't playing, so let's move it a little bit up. nice volume to have a piano playing in the background in your home. It's important that when you choose your music, when you want the piano to be playing, that you want to choose music like, for instance, if you want to, you know, have the piano playing in the background in your house, nice and sweet, pick something that's nice and sweet. You want to pick something like what I played in the intro of this, you know, boogie woogie or something, you know, it might be a little too rambunctious. And, uh, you know, if you get a phone call, you, then, then you'll have to turn the piano off or whatever, but just, you, you want to try to, you know, set some favorites in here for different moods that you might be in that might work for you so that you can enjoy your piano and not have it, like, uh, you know, annoying you sometimes. Okay, so now the second type of music that we have in here is going to be, and then when we want to go out to the main menu, we're going to press this, go back, and then let's say we want to listen to, let's say watch to it, okay? And... I like this song, It Had To Be You. Okay, so he's, the artwork's gonna come up. I'm gonna press play. Now, right off the bat, the vocal is too low. You hear mostly piano. So we're gonna make an adjustment here. So we're gonna move this more towards the speaker. So right now you hear Rod Stewart on the speaker, it's just not really loud. So now you can raise the volume up. cut that off because if you play that too much then yeah then uh, YouTube uh, will will see that it's copyrighted and then like erase it or something so you won't be able to see uh, the other type of software that we have that we'd like to show you is uh, videos so you have videos on here as well in your library okay one of the ways that you see the video is that videos are always going to look like a, a video screen see a lot of this artwork here like Barbara Streisand that's not a video the video looks like a video, so you see over here, this is a video. Let's see, I got a, one of our favorite ones here. Oh, this is here. This is uh, Natalie Cole. This is a good one. Let's play the Natalie Cole. Hold on a second. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> there we go. <laughs> gives you an idea about the video there. This is a this is actually an updated app, so sometimes I get glitchy with it and I forget how to uh, navigate through it, but it just takes a little practice back and forth. Um, they just recently up updated this uh, about a month or two ago, and every once in a while my mind reverts back to the older version. But anyway, okay, so that shows you how to use the uh, shows you how to use the iPad with the piano, and obviously if you have, ever have any questions on how to use it, you could always give me a quick text or a, big, or a quick call. And that last thing that we're going to do that we didn't do with this piano that we do with every other one is just a little tour of what we do to every piano before they go out, which is uh, only done here at Piano Outlet. Um, we are the only facility in the United States that restrains every single piano that goes out. The reason why we do that is quality control. I know exactly the way the piano is going to come to your house. It's not going to be any dirty soundboard or rusty strings or loose tuning pins because everything that's everything that we put in before the piano goes out is new. Okay, any parts that we have to put on are Yamaha factory parts. But your piano might be 30 years old, might be 40 years old, but it's going to look like one that's almost brand new, pretty much, and. Um, it doesn't matter. That's the one thing about our pianos, because a piano is not like an iPad or a car that has a new feature every year, a new technology. It's the same technology. Uh, the only thing is that you have to find pianos that have had very little use and been maintained very well and not abused. Okay. Once we have that, then the pianos come in. Uh, they don't look like this. They 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 got some scratches on them sometimes. Those get buffed and polished out. Then we put all new the strings. We clean the actions, and that's why every piano that leaves here is going to look like brand new, pretty much when you get it in your house, and something to be very proud of. This piano new today, somewhere around sixty-five or seventy thousand um, dollars. Generally, they go out between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars without the player system. Um, here's another one over here, just to show you. That's uh, almost ready to go out. Um, this also has a piano disc system on it. It's also fully loaded, but you see the inside here, everything is brand new. This piano looks just like the C3 on the inside, and this piano is almost 20 years older than the C3. But with all the brand new strings, new tuning pins, everything in here clean, backed up to new standards, uh, you'd never know that this piano was from the early 1980s. Anyway, I guess that wraps it up, and I wanna thank uh, everyone for, for watching uh, this video and hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you on the next one. Thank you very much.